All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about the cellular and chemical organization of the body. Please go ahead and watch that first video, and that's what your bell work will be on today. Go ahead and pause the screen and complete your bell work for the day and your bell work. And today will be the last bell and exit ticket. So after you finish the exit ticket at the end of this lecture, go ahead and submit your bell work for this week. We're going to begin by talking about the cell membrane. The cell membrane is a phospholipid bilayer, which means it contains a fatty acid tail and a phosphate head. And the phosphate head functions as a hydrophilic head, meaning that it is um, attracted to water or that it is soluble in water. It's not going to repel water. The hydrophobic tails are water resistant or they are hydrophobic, which means that they don't mix well with water. And this is important for the cell because our cell is lined with this cell membrane called the phospholipid bilayer. And the tails of the um, fatty acids line up in the middle, creating a hydrophobic region and the heads line up on the inside and outside of the cell, making a hydrophilic region. Um, this is just a little snippet out of the cell membrane, and it's called a bilayer because it is layered twice, right? There's two layers. One of the phosphate heads are lining the inside of the cell, and the other side of the bilayer is lining the outside of the cell. So when we look at a cell, this is really what the cell membrane looks like, where there is this lip this phospholipid bilayer, and inside would be this intracellular environment, outside would be the extracellular environment, and this would be for pretty much any cell we look at. So if we look at red blood cells here, for example, what is lining those red blood cells, if we zoomed in, would be this phospholipid bilayer, creating this membrane with two distinctive external and internal environments. This relates to the video on the intracellular and extracellular fluid that you just watched about fluid compartments because the intracellular fluid is lined by the phospholipid bilayer where the internal environment is sep separated from the external environment by the phospholipid bilayer. The intracellular environment and the external external cell envir extracellular environment, also known as the extracellular fluid, are two separate environments. In fact, there's a, a, technically a third separate environment of the blood vessel. Um, this is a good picture to kind of um, envision how the bilayer functions to create two separate environments. But in reality, this is kind of um, another picture, um, kind of how I will draw it, which I'll show you in a second, to kind of better represent um, the types of things we're going to be talking about um, in this chapter. Again, here's that phospholipid bilayer. And on this cell membrane, we have a whole bunch of proteins studded throughout. Um, we have glycoproteins, and we have transport proteins, we have channel proteins and membrane proteins. Um, all of these different things are specific to um, different types of cells, but they can generally have um, numerous of these different components, and they can be specific to certain cells, and they can have different concentrations or various amounts on specific types of cells. But what's important to understand is that cell membranes can have any of these different types of proteins embedded throughout them, and they all serve to different functions of the cell. Okay, so to get a better understanding of what our cells look like and how do these fluid compartments um, maneuver, I went ahead and drew you a little picture. Now, um, these three um, dots here are going to represent our cells. So these are the intracellular fluid environments would be within the cell. So right here we have our cell. Now remember, each of these cells are lined with our plasma membrane. That's what I drew poorly right here so that you can remember that there is a plasma membrane surrounding each of these individual cells. And we can remember that our inside of the cell is called the intracellular fluid, which we, which we abbreviate as ICF, intra. cellular
fluid. And that would be everything that's on the inside of the cell. Okay, now I have, I have shown you also the ECF, which stands for our extracellular fluid. And in our extracellular fluid, we have two different types of fluid. So I like to actually call our extracellular fluid, break it apart from our interstitial fluid and our plasma. So we have our interstitial fluid and our plasma. So one example, like I said, of our extracellular fluid is our interstitial fluid, which is basically the fluid between the cells and not in the blood vessels. So this is called interstitial. And that is our IF, interstitial fluid. Okay, now as for our plasma, the plasma is the fluid component of our blood vessels. So this right here, this structure that I've drawn is a blood vessel. What do our blood vessels hold? Blood. And within that blood is plasma. Plasma is the liquid component of blood. That is why our blood is liquid, even though our cells are not really liquid, right? Our cells are kind of solid, although they could be considered aqueous. They're not liquid. Plasma is what makes our blood liquid. So this is actually considered another part of the extracellular fluid and this fluid is called plasma. But a lot of the times we will just kind of look at this as the concentration of some product, so of some, we'll say variable, in the blood. Okay, and just to keep things simple, I'm going to kind of tell you guys how I annotate things. So in our greenish color right here, this is not pertaining to any one in particular thing. So this is more so to kind of understand the notation and why I'm telling you these things. So if you have some brackets here. This brackets are telling you that I'm talking about the concentration. And what does that mean? I ran out of room here. But this is telling you that there is a specific amount of something in a certain spot. So by this notation of concentration, you guys will also see me write of, of a certain type of fluid here. If I'm talking about intracellular fluid, it would be the concentration of the variable X in the intracellular fluid. And that would tell you that this variable X has a specific concentration in this environment. If I was talking about the interstitial fluid, it would be the concentration of the variable X in the interstitial fluid. And finally, if we were talking about our blood or what's within our blood vessel here, it would be noted the concentration of our variable 
sex within the blood. Sometimes I'll write out the full word blood. So that would tell you the amount of this chemical X within the blood. And just to recap, the concentration for our blood vessels would be concentration of some variable X in the blood. Whereas our concentration within a cell of a certain, um, let's say of a certain variable, would be denoted as our concentration of variable X in the intracellular fluid. And finally, we would have our concentration in the extracellular fluid or the interstitial space. Now remember, our blood is a component of the interstitial space. So when we're talking about concentration gradients and comparing our interstitial fluid to our intracellular fluid, you have to remember that we're also talking about the blood and the interstitial fluid. Here's our interstitial fluid. And then we have our extracellular fluid, which hopefully you guys got this in the last video. Our, our extracellular fluid, which I will put here in blue. It's equal to both our interstitial fluid and our blood plasma. So make sure that you know that that also denotes our blood, which is our plasma. And our interstitial fluid. Okay, those are just some notes to make before we kind of go over chemical gradients. So in order to have a gradient, you need to have various concentrations of a um, chemical, for example, on the inside of the cell that is different than the outside of the cell. Okay, so just to say we have this blue dot here. There's a certain concentration of this blue dot on the inside of the cell, on the outside of the cell, and in the plasma. It kind of looks like a cookie, but we're not worried about the cookie. So we're going to try to find the concentration of our blue chemical and compare it from the interstitial space, the cellular space, the intracellular space that is, and the extracellular environment. And remember for the extracellular environment, we're going to talk about all extracellular fluids, which is not only our interstitial space, but also our blood vessels. So the concentration of our blue guy in the intracellular fluid and then we're going to talk about the concentration of our blue guy in the extracellular fluid and we'll talk about that in red even though I'm under I know that we didn't have the extracellular fluid labeled in red earlier we're just changing up the colors so here we go here we want to compare it to the concentration in the extracellular fluid. And this will become apparent when we start talking about simple and active transport, diffusion, in the upcoming um, lectures. But I'm just trying to get you guys to understand a couple of key points before we get into some of this harder stuff. Okay, so when we're looking um, at our blue guy, we want to say, is it greater than 
Is it less than or is it equal to the concentration of the external environment? Okay, and just to make it abundantly clear, I'm going to draw some more blue guys up in the cell. So you want to say, are the blue guys in this extracellular environment here, which includes the plasma and the interstitial fluid, greater than, less than, or equal to in the intracellular fluid? Well, hopefully you see that there is a lot of blue guys concentrated in this intracellular space. So the answer would be the, the concentration in the intracellular fluid is greater than the extracellular fluid. Okay, let's give you another example. Let's talk about our different color. We'll use yellow. What if we were talking about our yellow guy? So I'm just going to make a whole bunch of little yellow guys. Now we're comparing our yellow guys from the internal and the external environment. Okay, so what is it for the yellow guy? We have yellow guy in the intracellular fluid and yellow guys in the extracellular fluid. And we want to decide again if it's greater than, less than, or equal to. I'm going to pause my screen really quick. So what do we think? Is our concentration of our yellow particle greater than, less than, or equal to the concentration of our yellow particle in the extracellular fluid. Well, which one has more? On the inside of the cell, do you see a higher concentration of yellow or on the outside of the cell? If you said on the outside of the cell, you would be correct. So the concentration is greater in the extracellular fluid for our yellow particle than the intracellular fluid. And why this is important will become clear to you guys um, soon. Basically, we want to have an inequality here, right? It's never going to be equal. It's never going to be equal. And this is an important property of cells because of the way that ions move. So we're going to talk about the ions that are on the inside of the cell versus the ions on the outside of the cell here in a second. And what happens in the way that things move and the biological processes that happen in our bodies, which therefore happen within our cells, are due to these concentration gradients. Concentration gradients occur because there is an unequal concentration of particles on the inside of the cell versus the outside of the cell. Okay, so here I have drawn a real life example. So we have sodium, which is pictured in pink, and potassium, which is pictured here in blue. And these are their chemical signals symbols. So we are comparing the concentration of sodium from the intracellular environment to the extracellular environment and the concentration of potassium from the intracellular environment to the extracellular environment. Now just to make things easier, this is true. So we have a higher concentration of sodium on the intracellular environment than the extracellular environment. So the arrow would go this way. There's a higher concentration in the extracellular fluid than the intracellular fluid. How about for our potassium? Our potassium, if you see, there's a big K on the intracellular environment. That is because we have a larger concentration of potassium in the intracellular environment than the extracellular environment. And these properties help create a concentration gradient because the concentration of potassium on the inside of the cell is unequal to or greater than the concentration of potassium on the extracellular environment. The opposite is true with sodium. The concentration of sodium is, is greater in the extracellular environment than the concentration of sodium in the intracellular environment. So there is actually like a little bit of potassium on the, in the inside of the, on the external environment, and there's also sodium on the inside of the environment. But there's a gradient where it's greater in the blood of sodium than it is in the cell. And the opposite is true with potassium. It's greater in the ex intracellular environment than the extracellular environment. These create concentration gradients. And this is an important concept that we will be talking about for the rest of this unit.
And here is your exit ticket to complete for the day. I hope you guys had a great week. Let me know if you have any questions, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a great rest of your weekend.